Love, Death, and Robots is an anthology series created by Tim Miller and David Fincher for Netflix. We had a great collaboration with Blur on Helping Hand for Volume 1, and they came back last year with a new challenge. Instead of going super hyper real, like we did for Helping Hand, they wanted something super stylized for the tall grass. It's one of the best things about working at Axis. We have that constant change in styles. The Tall Grass is based on a short story by Joe Lansdale, and it's about an ordinary man who encounters something extraordinary that is going to change his view in the world for the rest of his life. Our goal was to make the tall grass feel like every frame is a painting, creating something that audiences haven't really seen before, something that's quite unique, something that is unfamiliar to them. And we really wanted our shorts to feel like one of those visual development paintings. Like, what if that came to life? And how do you do that in computer animation? Not to mention this to anyone. Blur had the idea of connecting me with Axis because they felt like they could really pull off this style, having done a very successful episode in the first season. We had a lot of freedom to develop the look and style of the tall grass. To actually get there, we had to really step outside our comfort zone and develop new workflows, innovate new methods to really create something that hasn't been done before. We really focused hard on developing a proof of concept, a very short, like, one-shot section of, of the whole film where we take it to completion. We had to connect the characters with the backgrounds and everything in between. We also had a few very important effects that we needed to integrate, like the cigarette smoke. So once that shot worked, we were like, we can do this. At first, I was like, wow, you guys did it on the first shot. I mean, they raised the bar and really it set, it set the tone for the rest of the film. When you're applying very prominent brush strokes onto something, it's very easy for that to suddenly look ugly in one particular shot. So there was a bit of back and forth. If you look carefully along the sides of his nose or the angle of his forehead, there's a certain kind of chiseled faceting to the 3D model. That means that when the light hits it, you're getting harder edges, you know, that are more indicative of loose paint rather than a uh, smooth CG feeling. It's funny, for a movie that's called The Tall Grass, one of the main characters is actually the grass, so you kind of have to think about it. You have to think how to present it. You have to think how to shape it. When a painter would paint grass, they would do brush strokes, like one, two, three, four brush strokes. It's all single grass plates coming out. To give the grass that certain feeling, there was actually a lot that had to be done. We wanted to have the grass acted in a specific way. So we decided that every interaction between the characters and the grass needs to be hand animated. Painting is a static object, and animation is a moving thing, and finding something in between brings you closer to a painting. So this is why we decided to animate on every second frame rather than every frame to get a little bit of a stop motion feeling into it. There is a handmade feel to it. I'm not particularly interested in an audience saying, wow, that looks just like it's real. I'm interested in, wow, I really feel that character's emotion. So we didn't want to go cartoony or over the top. I'm really grateful to Blur and Netflix to have had the opportunity to do something like this that is so unique in style. I'm incredibly proud of the work that Axis Studios has contributed to the Love, Death and Robots series. Two films, two incredibly different styles. Not a lot of studios would be able to do that.